dedicated spindle versus router. If you're in the market for a CNC machine, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hopefully today I can help you narrow down which is the right machine for you by talking a little bit about the pros of a router. First off, it's 110 volt and can plug into most home outlets. It's commonly available at most of your big box retailers. They are often sold at an affordable price point and routers are often air cooled. Now let's discuss some of the cons if you elect to go that route. The biggest one is gonna be the fact that they're gonna suffer from very low torque. There's not gonna be any variable speed option. You will have to set the spindle speed manually versus being able to program that in your CAD CAM software. They're often gonna have a much smaller collet size. Some of the routers do allow you to go up to half inch. Most of them are only gonna be a quarter inch collet. A router is gonna be prone to much more run out and they are going to be extremely loud. And when I say they're extremely loud, we're talking Harbor Freight pancake compressor obnoxiously loud all day long. That's just the reality, you better have ear protection. And lastly, like anything mechanical, they are gonna be prone to burnout, so you really might want to research which one has the best warranty. If you guys are enjoying this type of content, you might wanna consider giving it a like. Now, unfortunately, if you're already having a hard time deciding between a router and a dedicated spindle, once we talk about the pros of a dedicated spindle, that's just gonna take you down a whole new rabbit hole of options to consider. So let's talk about some of the pros. Right out the gate, you're gonna get many more options when it comes to horsepower, and if you have a much larger horsepower motor, you're gonna need that torque. As I mentioned earlier, the routers really only work well at the higher RPM level, where a dedicated spindle is gonna work from the low RPM range all the way up to that high RPM range. If you're increasing your torque and your horsepower, you gotta increase your clamping pressure. A dedicated spindle is gonna have all kinds of call options all the way up to a cat 40. And if you're running your CNC machine hard, you will have a spindle failure at some point. And with a dedicated spindle, you can typically rebuild that. You could have another dedicated spindle sitting on the shelf. And while the other one's getting rebuilt, you'll never go down and lose out on dollars because you can't complete production. And speaking of production, once you upgrade to a dedicated spindle, you can look into getting an automatic tool changer. Gone are the days of programming pauses into your CNC program so you can manually change out that bit, load up a dedicated spindle, rock some Cat 40 holders, and do some automatic tool changes. Game changer. Speaking of programming, another thing to consider, you will always be able to program your spindle speed and control it in your CAD CAM software in your controller. If you're using a router, you cannot control that. You don't even know what spindle speed you're running. Now hold your horses. I know I had you sold on the pros with the dedicated spindle, but we do gotta talk about some of the cons. Right out the gate, the price. That's gonna be anywhere from two to five times the price depending on what model you go with. Sometimes it's not in everybody's budget, so that's gonna cancel the dedicated spindle. Another thing to factor in is the size. Dedicated spindles are much larger than a router. You might not buy a big enough CNC machine that can house a big dedicated spindle. The stepper motors or servo motors might not be able to handle that big workload. Another thing to consider is the power requirements. Most dedicated spindles are going to be a minimum of 220 volt single phase. So if you don't have the power, you might have to hire an electrician. There's another added expense. Some of these rock three phase. If you don't have three phase, which is typically at commercial, you could be looking into getting a rotary phase converter. I don't think these can run on a static. That's gonna be a huge added expense as well. And another thing to consider, some dedicated spindles are air-cooled and some are water-cooled. So depending on your application, you might need to look into additional equipment if you go with a water-cooled one to keep that spindle operating at an ideal temperature. If you guys enjoy these tips and tricks on how to select the right CNC for you, drop a comment below. Make sure you guys like this and give me a follow so I can keep producing content. And again, let me know what you guys are looking for.